Hello, my name is Dr. Tom McWright and welcome to another video on health app reviews. This video has been brought to you by Orca, the organisation for the review of care in health apps. And today we'll be taking a look at heart health apps. In particular, we'll be taking a look at Fibrocheck, Cardia and Fitbit. Now, all of these apps have been, uh, have been presented to me through the Orca Health Library, and it's Orca who are kindly sponsoring this video today. But apart from that, none of the app companies that we'll be reviewing today have financially incentivized this video or paid me or, or been involved financially in any other way. So these are independent reviews. So we'll be discussing how GPs can use these, how they can recommend them to patients and how they might be helpful during COVID. The first app we'll take a look at then is Cardia. Now Cardia is a device that's designed to mimic the results of a single lead ECG and it comes with this really handy device. The patient places their fingers on the device for 30 seconds, connects their device to their mobile phone and they'll be able to record a 30 second ECG trace, single lead. And the idea that is that it's used to detect AF, atrial fibrillation. The process has been through research, it's got a CE mark, and it's been shown to have an 85% sensitivity for detecting AF and a 90% specificity. It's been reviewed by NICE and had favourable reviews there, and they feel that it's most likely to be valuable when we're able to share the device with cohorts of patients that may be at risk of developing arrhythmias, kind of in place of where we currently use ambulatory ECG monitoring. What I particularly liked about this, though, is the ease of use. Both the device and the app that comes with it is so intuitive. Simple for the patient, hold your fingers there. The trace looks like a standard one lead ECG trace. Very easy for a GP to interpret. And if the patient wanted to get a private review, it costs just £5 as an in-app purchase to have it reviewed by a cardiophysiologist. So that's dead handy as well. Once the patient's recorded their trace, they have the option to track the results. They can track them over time. They can link Cardia up with other health apps from the Google Fit Library. So things that can monitor height, weight, blood pressure. And then the other thing that you can do is encrypt the ECG and email it to a person of your choice, most likely your GP or cardiologist. So overall, I think a really, really great app, dead easy to use. Downsides are cost, it's not free. The device costs £99, so it's costly. But I think the fact that it's not a sign, it's not linked to just one device, that you can share it amongst others and perhaps have a few of these to loan out to patients. I think it could be potentially more cost effective than having access to ambulatory ECG monitoring and could be a much quicker way to get those results. Long term though, I think if you're a CCG watching this, the other option is whether something like this could be used for AF screening. I realise we're not quite there yet, but I think there's great potential for using this in the future. The next app we're going to check out is FibriCheck. And like Cardia, this is the device primarily meant for detecting AF. When it's been checked in research trials, it's been found to have a sensitivity of 95% and a specificity of 98% for detecting AF. And when you compare it to a patch-based ECG trace, the two are almost indistinguishable. What makes this one different, though, in a big way from traditional ECG, is it uses photoplethysmography. I had to get that right, photoplethysmography, which is basically a similar technology to oxygen saturation probe. This is what the app looks like from the patient's side. And simply you press the heart, and what it will direct you to do is to place your finger over the camera lens of your phone. It'll ask you to pop the phone down on a hard surface. And once you've done that, as you can see, it starts measuring your, uh, your heart rhythm. It takes 60 seconds to measure your heart rhythm and after that it tells you whether it looks regular, whether the signal is strong enough and also what your heart rate is. This is a previous reading that I, that I did before and you can see there it tells you both the heart rate and the regularity of it as well. This isn't free either unfortunately FibriCheck does a subscription-based model that costs 3 dollars per month 
or £10 per month for the premium model. And what the premium allows you to do is to share the results in live, in real time, with a physician. And this is where things get quite interesting with FibroCheck. Not only do you have the phone app for the patient, but there is also a dashboard for the clinician. This dashboard shows you a number of different things, including you can see all of your patients that are using FibroCheck and all of their readings, as well as what symptoms they were feeling at the time, uh, what they were doing when they took the measurement. But what this also does when you click on each reading, it gives you a much more detailed breakdown of the results. It shows you the wave to wave differences in signal, which basically reflects beat strength, beat to beat. It also shows you the rate between each, or, or the time between each R wave in the trace. And what that gives you an idea of is what is the variability of the heart rate, which would be useful for detecting things like AF. And then finally, it also gives you a heart rhythm fingerprint, which measures the beat to beat variability on a, gra on a graph. And very quickly, you can see whether they're clustered together in a, in a single circle or whether it's more of an ovoid, more of a dispersed picture, suggesting a lot more variability in the trace. On the whole, I think this is, this is really handy for patients, certainly. Compared to Cardia, there's no device that they also have to purchase. All they need is a phone. I did find it a little tricky, though, if I'm truthfully honest, in that it, it isn't compliant with a lot of devices. It doesn't seem to work on tablets at all. It only seems to work on some smartphones. So that could be a little bit of a barrier. The other thing is, from the physician's perspective, I thought that dashboard was quite cluttered. Difficult to navigate, not as clear as visualising a single trace would be. Uh, and also the help guide that went along with it, I didn't think were that helpful. So on the whole, again, I guess fits a similar niche to Cardia in that useful for ambulatory monitoring, useful for patients suffering with intermittent palpitations and are worried. And I guess the advantage it has is there's no additional medical device that needs purchasing, they just need a phone. Whether you also decide to use the dashboard though as a GP, that's a decision for you to make, but I think I'd find it a little too complex and cluttered to use at the moment. The last app today then is one you've probably heard of before and that is Fitbit. Now I must admit that I always thought Fitbit was simply a step tracker. I knew that it could pick up heart rate as well and some friends had talked about sleep but I hadn't really considered how it was really going to fit into the health world. The Fitbit watch actually also tracks activity levels per hour, flights of stairs climbed, it tracks your sleep, and it can also track your exercise and calories burnt throughout the day. What I like about it is by putting it in the form of a handy watch, it means it integrates elements of health tracking into your day-to-day. -day. So monitoring activity and calories just becomes a routine part of your day, like checking the time. What's most useful though, is not so much what's in the watch, but what's on the app. Through the app, you're able to track calories, by scanning the barcodes on the foods that you eat. You can, you can track your water intake to make sure you're staying hydrated. If you're a woman, you can also track your periods and identify the most fertile spot in your cycle if you're trying to get pregnant. What I like most about the app though is the discovery tab, which lets you choose guided programs to improve your health in general. Although some of these programs are hidden behind a premium subscription paywall, a lot of them are free. I signed up to one around cutting out my sugar or, or reducing my sugar intake. And it gave me some really valuable education that I think most patients would, would find really useful. And it also created goals within the main app that I had to tick through each day. Things like making sure I wasn't having sugary cereal for breakfast. There's also the opportunity to set yourself challenges like doing, uh, doing um, the number of steps that would make up certain famous hikes in the world or competing against friends. So when it comes to habit formation and creating healthier day-to-day healthier -day habits, I think Fitbit could be an excellent option. The two downsides to it at the moment are the cost. This watch costs £110. And Fitbit watches can go up to £280. The other thing is for the guided programs to work and for the tracking to work, the patient has to be quite motivated. 
Although the heart rate, steps and sleep tracking is all automated, other things like calorie counting, uh, changes in weight, uh, being able to tick off exercise programs, that all requires someone regu regularly logging into the app and entering in their details. But I think if you do have a highly motivated patient who isn't put off by the cost and is looking to make sweeping changes to their fitness, to their nutrition and to their sleep and stress levels, Fitbit could be a great resource to recommend. That's it for our video review today. Just to remind you, the apps we covered were Cardia with a K, Fibrocheck and Fitbit. And in summary, I think the first two potentially have a role for identifying arrhythmias, especially AF in those patients with intermittent palpitations or, or as an alternative to ambulatory ECGs. And I think Fitbit potentially has a role for patients who want more wide scale changes to their health, who are committed to being able to enter and track their details, who have that kind of intrinsic motivation and who aren't put off by the cost associated with it. Please do follow both myself and Orca on Twitter, on LinkedIn. I'm at Mikkel underscore Doc or at Orca, you can find them, or subscribe to our YouTube channels and you can see more of these videos. But thank you very much for tuning in and look forward to seeing you next time.